Tim Keller is an excellent example of this. I'd rather have this guy as my pastor than Tim Keller. Tim Keller is Looney Tunes. He looks for a third way in every way. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Contra Thoughts. My name is Richard, and I might be a Roman Catholic. Coming up next. All right. How's everybody doing? Pretty good. Hope you're doing well. <clears throat> Hope you're doing well. Uh, I've got a lot of new subscriptioners lately, and I am reminded to remind or say uh, a bit about me, just kind of, you know, get everybody up to speed. I'm a husband and a father, and uh, I've been married to my wife for quite a few years, since 2007, and uh, I've got four children. We and I pastor a church here in Kentucky, a little church in uh, western Kentucky. I do other things too, but that's the main thing. Uh, and I also do this, and I like doing this, and this has really built a community of a lot of uh, people, a lot of Christians, I think, most mostly all, although it's, you know, we're not exclusive in that regard, uh, but just a coalition of different people sharing different parts about their life, encouragements, agreement, disagreements, and so on. And uh, it's been great. I just did a video yesterday about my channel, uh, just kind of a behind the scenes. If you want to go check that out, you can. Um, it was live, and so I had a little bit of... Uh, some technical difficulties, really my own fault. I didn't link something and just like, duh. So my own, my own misstep, mess, messed that up. So anyway, but yeah, the goal of this channel is to be against the world for the world. And I am Richard Contramundum, Richard against the world. Because at some point somebody was against you, if you're a Christian, uh, for you, not just because, you know, you should live that way. You shouldn't wear that. You shouldn't talk that way, etc. Now, somebody might have said that, but the reality is somebody's saying that because they know that Christ is better, that Jesus can wash away your sin. He can take it away and he can give you new life. And it answers the biggest question that humanity asks. Why are we here? How did we get here? What happens when you die and everything else? Uh, it's fascinating because a lot of people just don't seem to know that anymore, uh, although it's been growing for really centuries. But go back to the Bible. And that's ultimately the goal uh, of this channel or, or the cornerstone of this channel is to bring everything under the bear of scripture. That being said, you clicked on this because you think I'm Roman Catholic now. And I might be, according to this video. I mean, I guess if it's between this priest and some of the Wokaristas, Wokanistas, president and mayor of Wokanda, anybody woke, I don't know, leftist, uh, you know, praising the current Supreme Court justice. Uh, nominee or um, couching baby murder as something other than baby murder or, you know, making a space for this or that. Um, I, I don't want that person. That guy is my pastor. That guy is not a pastor. He's a wolf uh, or he's just self-deceived and he thinks he's a sheep, which he's still within a wolf. I was just cruising the Internet. Hey, bubbly. This is not an ad, by the way. Although if they want to give me money, but it's PepsiCo, they're not going to give me money. It's between this guy and another guy, a, a, a woke, you know, Matt Chandler or worse, David Platt or somebody like that. I might take this guy. So let's watch this and understand what in the world I am talking about. Signs and wonders. All right, let's play this. Do you realize that St. Paul tells the priest that the apostolic gift of preaching is given to the priest? to provoke conviction. I'm not here as your clown. I'm not here to tell you cutesy stories to make you have warm fuzzies. If you want that, go to another parish. There are a lot of them here in this area. If you're truly worried about where you stand with the Lord Jesus, if you want to truly allow grace to form you and make you fit for the kingdom of God, if you believe in the reality of heaven and hell, and you understand the power of grace, and you truly want to allow the Lord Jesus to save you, as we hear in the scriptures today, work out your salvation in fear and trembling, that finds you a good Roman Catholic parish and stay close to the sacraments. Find a priest who's willing to preach the gospel, even if there are times that it might not make you feel good, but you don't particularly like what he's saying. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. All right. Yeah, I'm a Roman Catholic. I mean, at least in some respects.
So what does he say? Let, let, it's only like a minute. Let's go back to it. Do you realize that St. Paul tells the priest that the apostolic gift of preaching is given to the priest to provoke conviction? I'm not here as your client. Okay. Uh, I don't like provoke. Uh, I understand what he's getting at. Provoke in the scripture, you look it up, it's, it's by and large like not good. Like fathers do not provoke your children to anger sort of thing. I understand what he's saying. I'm not trying to be nitpicky here. I still would agree 100% with that and say, you know, uh, the preaching of the word of God, not man's opinion, but God's word brings conviction and brings encouragement and conviction. Sometimes we get stuck on one or the other. And I think there's a lot of churches in both camps where, you know, we only talk about the warm fuzzies, like he says, or we only talk about victory and yes, and I'm excited. And do you understand a blessing and a word for like, uh, yeah, Okay. But what about the other part? What about like the fact that you're a wretched sinner? What about the fact that you're rebelling? What about the fact that you don't know Christ? What about the fact that you're walking in darkness? You're marching in the army of Satan. What about that? Yeah, yeah, okay. But that's where you have to have both, right? You have to have the law and gospel, right? The law to bring the conviction, like Paul says, as a tutor, as a schoolmaster, to bring us to Christ. Clown. He's not a clown. I'm not here to tell it's you good. cutesy stories to make you have warm fuzzies. If you want that, go to another parish. There are a lot. That's true. And I would say that to my church. And I think maybe we haven't had some people come back because of that. I don't teach warm fuzzies. Now, the scripture does have several instances of warm fuzzies, but it's not all that, right? Scripture deals, again, with reality. It doesn't deal with fantasy. So he's saying that too. And if, if, if it's between this guy and a woke pastor, I'm going to the Roman Catholic Church. And I'm going to ignore some of the other stuff that we'll talk about in a moment. But man, if he's going to preach the word like he said, he's going to preach the gospel. Get to a church. If you don't want to be in this, if you want me just to preach warm fuzzies, I'm not a clown. Go somewhere else. Great. Thanks for having a spine. This is great. I commend you in that. A lot of them here in this area. I have no idea where he is. You're truly worried about where you stand with the Lord Jesus, and you want to truly allow grace to form you and make you fit for the kingdom of God. If you believe in the reality of heaven and hell, and you understand the power of... Ooh, reality of heaven and hell, right? Not just both. Or not just one, but both. It's good. Grace. And you truly want to allow the Lord Jesus to save you. Allow... Yeah, that's pretty... As my high Calvinist friends would call him, you know, he's a Pelagian, and they would scratch their heads at me and be like, what are you doing? You're giving airtime to a Roman Catholic. Don't you know that this is the den of Satan? The Pope is the Antichrist. Well, he's an anti he's an Antichrist, no doubt. But just like the uh president of the Southern Baptist Convention doesn't really have a ton of power, the Pope, I've heard, doesn't have a ton of power in I mean he has a lot more power than the president of the Southern Baptist Convention. But there are plenty of churches that, especially current, you know, Frank the Hippie Pope, as some people call him. He is not representative of most conservative Roman Catholics. So take that for what it is. As we hear in the scriptures today, work out your salvation in fear and trembling. Knowing that it is God who is at work in you. He left that part out. That finds you a good Roman Catholic parish. And... Eh, no. <laughs> Find you a good, Roman, a good Roman Catholic. Now, again, if it's between this and some leftist dead in your social club, you know, where the pastor is, you know, a trans midget with one eye, that's not a church, right? That's literally something else. That's another gospel. It's another religion. So yeah, go here, right? And and read the Bible and, and listen to somebody who has conviction and who's preaching about Christ. Again, hear me with a grain of salt, but I think we need to be a little bit more gracious in our time now and times coming where we think that person has evangelical attached to their name or Baptist, or they went to this seminary or they went this, and they read this book or they wrote this book or they used to be solid. And we just kind of give people a pass when they say the most ridiculous things. Tim Keller is an excellent example of this. I'd rather have this guy as my pastor than Tim Keller. Tim Keller is Looney Tunes. He looks for a third way in every way, including it seems the gospel, which there isn't another gospel, Paul says. And if you say, let them let that be so you're damned. Well, you'd be doubly damned. Anathema. That's a big deal. I mean, Tim Keller has said so many just ridiculous things. This is about Tim Keller. But even just in the last few months, I've done a couple of videos on him. And 
There's many more out there that do way better work. And it's like the most, just like, what are you saying? You're a Christian pastor. I'm like, what is wrong with you? I guess lots what's wrong with him. I don't know. Anyway, stay close to the sacraments. Again, find a eh. priest who's willing to preach the gospel. Yeah. Even if there are times that it might not make you feel good, but you don't particularly like what he's saying. Don't particularly like what he's saying or make you feel good. Preach the gospel. Notice what he says. He preached the gospel. Now, again, people throw around the gospel all the time. And we see this and we've seen this within Big Eva. You know, it's a gospel issue. Why has got a central gospel, all gospel above all the central of just preach the gospel. And it's like, well, I, but what do you mean? You mean racial reconciliation is part of the gospel? Because that's not true. You mean, you know, reparations, that's a gospel issue? No. You mean gender equality, that's a gospel? You mean marriage equality, gospel? Yeah, no. Right? The life, death, and resurrection and ascension of Christ. That's the gospel. Now, that's the crux, and that's the cornerstone, of it, and there's applications of the gospel because of that. Once, because you're redeemed and washed by the blood of the Lamb, you're then marching now in the army of light. You're transferred from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light it's it's a big big difference for for everything for your life you're born again to a living hope peter says in fact peter and this is why i couldn't ultimately be a roman catholic but peter tells us well having a good conscience this is 1 peter 3:16 when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good. Oh, let that sink in, people. Let that sink in. How often, how many times are we worried about slander? I mean, my other video on Wednesday that dropped with Chris Rock and you know Will Smith, the whole slap, the, the meme generator of the century. Chris Rock, I mean, you know, okay, it's a disease, and I learned a little bit more. It's it's kind of a self-inflicted disease, like if you do weaves. Chris Rock insulted, right? So he didn't do something good, and then Will Smith came and slapped him. He insulted, and then, you know, so he's not really suffering for doing good. If that should be God's will for you, then doing evil, Peter says. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. Now, from my understanding, and again, I could be wrong, and there might be differences from you know Roman Catholic parish to Roman Catholic parish, but that's why Jesus is still on the cross. He's being ascended or, or brought down again and sacrificed again at the altar, right? There's an altar, and Christ is being sacrificed once again. Now, I'm sure some Roman Catholics don't believe that. That's possible. Uh, but that, as far as I know, and how I understand, is the teaching of the Roman Catholic Church. But that's not what Peter says. Peter says explicitly Christ suffered once for sins. So that's why we can look back and just like Abraham and Moses and Adam looked forward to Christ, the Messiah, though they didn't know Jesus's name, right? None of those men knew Jesus's name, yet they were in Christ and, and being washed and saved because of God's sacrifice. Hebrews 4, since then we have a great high priest, that is Jesus, who passed through the heavens. Jesus, the son of God, let us hold fast our confession. This is so good. This makes me it's getting, makes me get emotional so often. I don't know if I will today. I can't. I can't conjure it up. If you're wondering, <laughs> but listen, listen to this. <clears throat> but we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. <laughs> like that's just so good. We don't have a high priest who is unable. We ha the implication is we have a high priest who is able. To sympathize, not empathize. Some translations say empathy. Empathy and sympathy are different. Sympathize with our weaknesses. But one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Hebrews is such a good book. I encourage you to go read it today. If you don't know, have, don't know what to do reading today, uh, I'm kind of bored. You forgot, you know, you're 10 days, two, two, two months behind on your reading plan for the year. Go read Hebrews. It's 13 chapters. Just go read, sit down. It takes like half hour, 40 minutes. It's so good. It's so rich. He, for Christ has entered, not into holy place made with hands, which are copies of the true things. Notice this is the temple, right? First the tabernacle, then the temple destroyed by Babylon, then second temple destroyed by Rome. But at this point, when this is being written, this is pre-temple, I believe. 
pre-destruction of the second temple proper. Not with things made with hands. This is talking about the crucifixion. And he enters into the holy place. Because all these things that we see, they're just shadows. They're real, yes. But they're still shadows. They're pictures. The true things, he says. But into heaven itself. Now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Like, that is so good. It is religious. But it's relational too. It's a relationship it's a, re- it's a religious relationship because really we you know so oh it's a relationship oh it's religion it's both it really is because we do have ritual right and and repetition and we are reminded and there are certain things that you know we do praying and reading and going and giving and so on but it's not just a religion but it's also not just a relationship right there is not this you know me and jesus lone ranger sort of thing you know we're just hanging out on the beach or in the forest whatever i don't need anybody else forget that no that's nonsense too you got to be in church. You have to be with people, fellow Christians. But he has gone this on our behalf. That's good. That's so good. That'll preach. Nor was it to offer himself repeatedly. And this is where it is. Again, every sacrament or every, excuse me, um, what is it? The Lord's Supper. What do they call it? The Eucharist. They're calling Christ down again and sacrificing him again. That's my understanding. Now, if you're Roman Catholic, please let me know if I'm getting that incorrect. But Hebrew says that the Roman Catholic tradition, that's not correct. So that's one of the reasons why I couldn't be a Roman Catholic. As a high priest enters into the holy places every year with blood, not his own. For then he would have to have suffered, suffer repeatedly since the foundation of the world. Implications meaning he doesn't. But as it is, he appeared once for all at the end of the ages to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Oh, that's so good. Like, this is so. That's the gospel. Jesus did it. Not you. Not me. Not extra other things. Not calling Jesus down or re-sacrificing him again. No. No. Not at all. I'm not sure what he's referring to, this priest. Uh, of course, the, the word priest, pastor, isn't really in the Bible either. It's overseer. Uh, uh, this is one of my lovely tools. It's free and easy to use. Overseer here. This is 1 Timothy 3. Episcopos, which sounds like Episcopalian, right? Well, that's where it comes from. Uh, and the word bishop also comes from there. The KJV actually has bishop here. Uh, ESV has overseer. It's pastor or it's bishop or it's overseer. They're all the same. There's really only two offices that are really talked about in um, the pastoral letters. Point is that there's a pastor, an overseer, a bishop. I guess the Roman Catholic Church translates this as priest. I'm not sure why. Ultimately, we have a great high priest, namely Jesus, the Son of God. And yeah, so anyway, Episcopos here, this is fairly, this is used a lot. We see this in Acts. We see this in um, Philippians, Timothy, 1 Timothy, Titus, and 1 Peter as well. So those are all, you know, it's not a lot. It's five times, but it's quite a few. 3, 16, all scriptures breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, reproof, for correction, and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be complete and equipped for every good work. Not sure what he's referring to as far as, Christ giving that commission, or he says St. Paul. Um, I don't know. 1 Timothy 3, that's what I just looked at. It's a faithful saying, if a man desires. So notice it's there's a desire from the man. It's not this anointing. I'll be careful. But it's not this anointing like magically that just shows up. Or like you're born into it. Or that the church somehow like picks you. That's not, that's not how it works. Like if you don't want to be a pastor and you don't feel like you should be a pastor, then you shouldn't be a pastor. Like it's pretty straightforward. And if you do want to be a pastor, don't be like, well, I'm reluctant. I love the testimonies and you know, they do it for whatever reason, but it's like, you know, I surrendered to some point. I'm like, surrender sounds like, I don't know. I mean, we are in a war, but like you're joining the, the, the victory team. Like you're joining Christ. And you're already a Christian, but like now you're still surrendering. It just sounds like you're doing it against your will, which is weird. 
because I feel like the Lord, I not feel like it, the Lord does work with our will, right? He, he, he works and moves with us. And sometimes people get weird with that and think, you know, too many strange things. But the bottom line is, I mean, he, like the priest said, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, knowing that it's God who is working you. I just read um, Doug Wilson uh, book and he used the example of Shakespeare writing Hamlet and how, you know, it'd be silly to say this is 100% Shakespeare. It's true and it is true, but it's also still 100% Hamlet. And so in one sense, God's sovereignty is that in that sense that this side of eternity, our choices matter and they do matter. And I don't think it's a farce, but at the same time, there's certain things that God's will like if he doesn't want you to move or he doesn't want you to this or he doesn't want you to have that job or get married or whatever, well, it's not going to happen. Like it's just not going to happen. People can fight it. And I think a lot of people are doing that these days publicly more and more. They're just fighting creation. They're fighting nature. All the brackets there you can see are additions, but it's, it's moving the text along in the bigger sense. Now, again, amplified isn't, isn't quote unquote a literal translation. Uh, it's more, I forget what it's technically called, but. Anyway, for a man does not know how to manage his own household. How can he take care of the household of God? For he must not be a new convert, right? So that he will not be behave stupidly. That's, I love that. Behave stupidly and become conceited by appointment of this high office and fall into the same condemnation incurred by the devil for his arrogance and pride. That's a big deal. That is a really big deal. And we can see that full well uh, with, Sadly, a lot of people. So I'm going to put this video link in the description if you're curious or willing to watch it. It's not very long. Um, but again, we need to be clear and not just lock arms with people because uh, they have the same last name as us. Right. And I'm talking specifically about the truth, about the gospel. I'm all for I would link arms with this guy in a heartbeat especially if he's standing for uh, religious freedom and protecting the unborn, right? And sanctity of, of human life in general and the foundation of the family and God ordained creation, et cetera. Tim Collar, I can, I'm probably going to be able to stand arm or lock arm with him. Not because he's not only Presbyterian, I'm not, but multiple, multiple other things. And so we can't just be like, well, you know, he's so-and-so. He used to be good. He used to write. He wrote this book. Well, he's friends with some. He spoke at that conference that one time and he was really passionate. Like, yeah, maybe. But I want to have friends and <clears throat> what we shouldn't want to do, I don't want to do, is keep out people, especially in this life, we can lock arms with, as it were. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful, not too rambling or confusing. I hope you have a good day whenever you're watching this. And um, that's it. He gets the world for the world. All right? Y'all take care. I know, you knew there was a catch. What is happening? No. <clears throat> Cut that out. Cut that out.